Well, good morning, good people and Eagle fans and 49er fans and Washington fans. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's going to have a great new week. This is, wow, the first week where we've got nothing but practice we sitting here i supposed to be the franchise player and we in here talking, talking about practice. practice we in here talking about practice in this first uh excuse me second week of the training camp going off and i couldn't be more excited uh today is dak prescott's 31st birthday It'll be interesting to see if the cowboys decide to get a contract done for its birthday but then again maybe dak prescott's in no rush to get this thing done um, of course, we are dealing with now a big hole in the defense with Sam Williams. Now, for those out there, it's kind of crazy because going through and listening to um, some of the comments out there, the season's over, man. It's We're done. I was like, wait a minute. Hold up, guys. Hold on for a second here. Um, it hurts losing Sam Williams, but Sam Williams – Hey, just pump the brakes on the season being over because we lost Sam Williams. Sam Williams, unfortunately, for whatever reason, the Dallas Cowboys just seem to be um, just jinxed when it comes to second round picks. The injuries, the uh, off the field issues, it just seems like the second round picks just don't work too well for the Cowboys. Schoonmaker, although knock on wood, I shouldn't say anything, hasn't been injured thus far in training camp, but has had an injury-filled career, a year-plus training camp, into it. Sam Williams, another guy much like Randy Gregory with a lot of potential. When you see how fast he was in his um, college uh, combine workouts, the guy was an absolute beast as far as speed. He has the size and all that. But he also has the Randy Gregory boneheaded plays that are in there. Um, special team standout has played inc incredibly well for us. But it was going to get his opportunity because uh, Dante Fowler, as well as Dorrance Armstrong, those two guys being let go by the Dallas Cowboys, they were looking for him to be able to step into the role. And as I pointed out before, when you looked at his numbers versus um, Dorrance Armstrong, Dorrance Armstrong had twice the amount of reps. So when you saw what Dorrance Armstrong did and you say, okay, those are really good numbers, you know, he wasn't that good. Well, he had half of the snaps. So if you were to extrapolate the production that he had with the same amount of snaps, then you could conceivably say that they were about the same guy. Now, the problem for the Cowboys is even with Sam Williams, there still was a lack of experience there that we were going through and looking at guys that we had drafted, guys that we had signed that were undrafted free agents, and looking at potential as opposed to somebody that you definitely looked at and said, this is going to be the guy. Now, we have, of course, this is part of the problem with this is, is we were looking to make changes with Mike Zimmer as the defensive coordinator, that Micah Parsons wasn't going to be possibly, at least this was the rumors, that they were looking for him to be coming from all over the place, in which case you're going to end up having two defensive ends. Marcus Lawrence is one of the best defensive ends. He's a better run stopper than pass rusher. And so he is also getting a little bit older and has had his injuries in the past as well. So you wanted to keep him fresh. So now you were looking to be able to install Sam Williams in there. Well, Sam Williams being gone definitely leaves a hole because now – you have to look at this and say the most uh, experienced guy that you have standing there right now is Chauncey Golston. Chauncey Golston was drafted with the, when the Cowboys moved back and took Micah Parsons, they ended up getting a third round pick, in which case they used for Chauncey Golston. Now, Golston has one and a half sacks and 38 solo tackles in his career with the Cowboys, um, has been a special team guy, and just could not get into the rotation because we've had so many guys, Dante Fowler, Dorrance Armstrong, uh, Semi Fioco, of course, you know, Micah Parsons and D-Law. You just had so many guys, which is 
is not a bad thing because, you know, when a guy gets out there, he says, I got to make my mark because I, I want to play more, so I've got to play well. And they're fresh, and you have more options. Um, but with that, Chauncey Goldston didn't get that much of an opportunity. So um, with Chauncey, Chauncey is probably the biggest guy. He's the biggest defensive end that you have right now at 6'5", and about 260, um, uh, about 260, 270. He's the biggest one, the, definitely the tallest one. Um, look for him to be able to get quite a bit of playing time. Of course, the Cowboys drafted in the second round Marshawn Needland, a guy who they believe could be the next Marcus Lawrence. Um, he's definitely a much better run stopper. He's a good size. He's about um, 6'3", 275, 276. Um, but he's raw. He is a rookie. He has not played in the NFL. So you're going to have to coach him up, and I think that they're definitely going to try and lean on him and make the future now. This is – if if there's any – good news on a guy getting injured that is that it happened early enough that other people could start getting repetitions and you know get more playing time in the preseason and really brought up the speed because see in today's NFL there's not enough time to educate a guy basically you're coming in with your set of skills we're basically practicing the number ones. You're getting all the reps. If you're a guy who's third string, fourth string, you are a scout team. You're a scout team. You're not getting the reps and stuff like the other guys. So now that Sam Williams is gone, they're going to be bringing guys and playing them more and starting role, and they're going to be going against the number ones. They'll get more experience in things. So that's at least the good news on it. And I can look back and I can say, um, here's a perfect example because this was, I can't believe this was eight years ago. Um, I tell you what's crazy for everybody. So many things happened in 2016. Okay. 2016 right now, my channel had about 300 subscribers, about 300 subscribers, the red brick house. We had just worked out the deal with the city to get the red brick house. The Cowboys drafted Dak Prescott. Eight years. Wow. Eight years. What was crazy is going from OTAs, Dak Prescott was the fourth string quarterback. Jameel Showers was the third string. They converted him to a D-back, and his career wasn't much left to it after that as far as being the NFL. But Kellen Moore was the backup. Kellen Moore broke his, I think it was his ankle he broke early in training camp, which moved Dak up to second string, where he got more and more reps. And Tony Romo, of course, didn't play much in preseason till the last preseason game, which was his last, pretty much his last game. He did play the final game of the year um, for a couple series. But other than that, that was pretty much the end of his career. But had Kellen Moore not gotten injured when he did, Dak would have been the third string quarterback if, let's say, the season started and then Tony Romo got hurt and then Kellen Moore uh, got hurt. Then you're looking at a guy who didn't get all of those reps in training camp and preseason games that brought him up to speed that made him successful. So maybe we end up having a situation here where Marshawn Needland gets all these reps and things that he won't have the bright lights and everything else. Um, you know, first game out there where, you know, you're nervous and all that, that he gets this up to speed sooner than later. Um, also here we've got um, a guy I know that uh, Game Time Brian has always been high on is Junior Fiocco. Junior Fiocco was another guy who was buried um, underneath the roster. This is going into a second year. Uh, fourth round draft pick by us. He's another good size guy. He's about 6'4", about 265, 267, somewhere in that range. Definitely a good size guy. But again, no experience really. Uh, this is the problem we have. We have potential, um, but then we don't have any experience. We have Tyrone Wheat, uh, I mean Tavirius, Tavirius Wheat, who's a little smaller. He's about 6'2", about 260. Um, typically, the Cowboys like guys that are taller and things. Um, and he's had 31 snaps in the NFL. 31. So, again, no experience. 
Sounds a lot like linebacker uh, a few years back when we ended up signing uh, Anthony Barr. And then we have undrafted um, Daryl Johnson, okay? Not Moose Johnson, but Daryl Johnson, 6'3", 240, definitely on the smaller side. So we don't have much experience right now. The Cowboys may look uh, outside of the... uh, outside of the building to bring somebody in more likely than anything else. They'll wait and bring in, you know, a veteran that has been released and things at this time of year right now, unless you're making a trade, if a player has any potential or is any good, they're on a roster right now, at least getting a look at to see, is this guy good? Is this a guy that can help us? Is this guy have any potential? If you're on the streets right now, typically there's a problem. Either you're asking too much money or too long of a contract like Stefan Gilmore, or the teams, you're not that good, or you're injured. So there's a reason why you're on the streets right now before teams make roster cuts. So more than likely, the team is going to be working the guys that they have. They're going to be evaluating them and seeing, can we go with this? And possibly, this is where the Cowboys are in a good position because they do have those extra compensatory picks next year. We have 12 picks going to the draft. We're going to need them because we have about 30 free agents and uh, that we're going to need to sign. We're going to have a lot of bodies that we're going to need to replace. But if you can make a trade, something like you did with Stephon Gilmore, Brandon Cooks, you know, with one of these late round draft picks, it may behoove you to be able to do that. But we'll see where they go with that. Now, of course, we've got the Dak Prescott situation, okay? Today is his birthday. Happy birthday, Dak Prescott. I can't believe 31 years of age, you've been with the Dallas Cowboys as long as you have. The third longest, I believe, with the Dallas Cowboys. This is the third or fourth still. Unbelievable. Um, With a chance to, if he has an incredible season, 41 TDs and about 4,700 yards, would be the all-time yardage leader for the Dallas Cowboys uh, in passing. And 41 TDs would make him the all-time touchdown leader, which is kind of crazy when you start thinking about this. Um, Now we have Jordan Love's deal done. We have, of course, uh, Tua's deals done. We have uh, Trevor Lawrence's deals done. Everybody's deals done, but the Cowboys don't have the money to pay anybody, of course. And this is the sales job. What's interesting is Jerry Jones didn't go on and say that Dak Prescott is better than Jordan Love. Some people will take that as, oh, Jerry Jones doesn't think that Dak Prescott is as good as Jordan Love. And apparently, Green Bay is the holdup for everything in Jerry Jones' mind. You know, when he was asked about the extension for Mike McCarthy, his response was Green Bay. When asked about Dak Prescott um, and uh, Jordan Love, of course, he's not going to say Jordan Love. But there may be another interesting reason to not say that, that Dak Prescott is better than Jordan Love. Negotiating. If you say, oh, yeah, Dak Prescott's better than Jordan Love, then you're saying then I need to pay him more than, or he's worth more than Jordan Love. In which case... That would be him having to pay him Jordan Love money, right? Doesn't that make sense? I think it makes sense. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Let's listen to the discussion this morning about just that from the talking heads. If I can get my cursor over there. Super Bowl contender now that the quarterback has got his money. Okay. No, they're not a Super Bowl contender. I don't know how making Tua Tungavaloa rich makes them better than they were last year. He (laughs) earned this contract, but we also saw who he was against Kansas City in the playoffs. They lost that game because they couldn't generate passing yards because Tua Tungavaloa was too cold. So unless the Super Bowl and the playoffs are going to be in South Beach, this team can't win it all to me. Lord, I hope they are. Kevin Clark. (laughs) Kevin Clark, another quarterback. Okay, Jordan Love, uh, he got his money. Is he going to be a top five quarterback this year? Absolutely. And the people who cry small sample size about Jordan Love don't understand that he was the best quarterback in football for the last 10 weeks of the year. 
He understands protection. His football intellect is so high. He is a special quarterback. This is a chance to be a special team. They're my NFC favorite. We've got a lot more to say about him as we go, but Swagoo, how about your guys with the star? Because Dak still not among those quarterbacks who got paid the big money. Is this adding up to his last year? My heart says yes, G, but my head says no when it comes to Dak being back with the Dallas Cowboys. I think this is now becoming about business with Dak. And it's only so many shots and so many uh, subliminals that Jerry Jones mm. can take, I think, before Dak realizes that he's always in a position of waiting on Jerry and Steven always. Jones to determine if he's good enough to be the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, we, we had one of those yesterday. Yeah, so, uh, Jerry, I'm sure we did. <laughs> Jerry I'm Jones sure we did. on the field. So, of course, what happens is this. This is the order, right? So Tua gets his money, then Jordan Love gets his money, then the reporters get a hold of Jerry Jones, and they say, hey, Jordan Love just got paid all this money. Is Dak better than Jordan Love? And here's how Jerry answered. Dak is a better quarterback than Jordan Love? Well, I, Dak, for us, is uh, 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 the... I get in trouble every time I make comparisons, okay? I do get in trouble. And, of course, we saw a head-to-head -head match in, uh, uh, with Green Bay last week. I mean, last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all got that bird in the I'm anxious for Dad to get a, sh a chance to show he's the best. With did, the did he almost Charlotte. say get his shit together? Did, did you wait. think he can do that without a new deal? Oh, oh yes. What yes. Did he almost say... Here. Uh, we've all got that burr in our saddle. I'm anxious for Dad to get a, sh a chance to show he's the best. He almost said get his Cowboys shit together. Star. He almost said that, didn't he? Do you think he? he can do that without a new deal? Oh, yes. What yes, do yes. But don't, don't, that might imply that uh, we're not going to do, do a, new, a new deal, and that's just not the case. Those things change. It can happen. Okay, so you want to talk about a picture being worth a thousand words. We've not heard from Dominique yet, so I'll give you the first crack at this, Neek. What, what, why are you making that face? If um, owner of the Cowboys was an elected position, they would be calling for a replacement. Yeah, you wait a Jerry Jones feels like he is just talking in word circles that don't make any sense. And it's a question that you normally don't hear GMs and owners be asked. So it's like weird to try to evaluate it because I don't know what the right answer to that question is because no GM or team owner would ever be asked that question and would respond to it talking about burrs and saddles and whatever. Just pay that man his money and be quiet. That's it. Uh, RC, why were you making that face? Because I, I really love Jerry Jones. Like, you guys don't understand. Jerry Jones is one of my favorite people in all of football because he will answer that question. And he'll answer that question in a way where he actually doesn't answer the question, but it causes more confusion, so we talk about them more. Mm -hmm. That is the beauty of Jerry Jones. He really ain't yes. saying nothing, right? He ain't never said that he was nothing. better than Jordan Love or the other way around. He basically said, hey, look, we're going to see, or we hope to see, that Dak gets another opportunity to show that he's better than Jordan Love while wearing a Cowboys helmet. Now, this is the first time I feel like in the entire offseason where he at least intimated that a deal could be imminent. Do I believe it gets done before the season? Absolutely not. But he did say things change. I do wonder when he says things change, what he's talking about specifically, because this hasn't seemed like something on Dak's side or Dallas's side mm -hmm. that they thought was even close to happening. Twag? Okay. <laughs> Let's do a little history. Too. History. <laughs> Let's do a little history. The reason the Dallas Cowboys are in this situation with Dak Prescott is why, I agree. Because mm -hmm. we sat here for two years talking about when are they going to pay Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. See, he wouldn't have to worry about $55 million mm -hmm. or yep. fifty three. He probably would have been in the position, Jerry and Stephen Jones, to pay Dak before all this money started getting thrown in the Hudson. Okay? Now, mm -hmm. I am a quarterback. You don't even have to win a playoff game to get $55 million right. no more. Yep. Yeah. So, for him, to, for him to start talking about a contract, He's starting at $55 million. That's, at least that's where Dak and his agent is starting at, right? So we get all of this talk from Jerry around mm -hmm. it. Man, just say yes. 
They, the dude being your quarterback for the last nine years, yeah. just say yes. I think he's better than Jordan Love, right? Jordan Love came go. to Dallas. We know the type of game that he had. Mm -hmm. But as the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> with a quarterback that you've had for nine years <laughs> that was in the MVP conversation last year during the regular season, Whew. you don't answer that question just yes? Yeah, no. <laughs> See, Dallas is trying to operate. Him both sent me a gr some numbers. But Dallas trying to operate in a poor man's league. Mm. They yep. still think yep. it's a poor man's league. Mm -hmm. It ain't a poor man league anymore. Gee, I was not able to articulate it this way for a number of years. Remember, I, I got on this show. I said it on Monday Night Countdown with me and RC. Mm. I said Dallas ain't trying to win no damn Super Bowl. Yep. But I started talking about all of the players that other teams were signing. Why is Dallas the only team that seems to never find the money? Thank Why you. Did they ever figure out a way to construct a, a, a salary cap where they can sign all of these guys that we see fly off the shelf in free agency every year? These dudes are crazy, and they operating in the poor man's NFL, yep. and it is yep. no longer that. Yep. In every negotiation, <laughs> they seem to want something that has never happened in the history of football, That's which it. is the price of a superstar going down. It's never happened. <laughs> and yet every single time they Cowboys say, maybe this joke. time, maybe this time, they lose every stare down with every player over the past at least decade, going back to Ezekiel Elliott. Right. I, I, I don't know what money. Zach Barton got an $8 million raise a couple of years ago, and now they're going to lose all of these stare downs. I was talking to a high-level person in football with another team over the weekend, and we were just throwing out different DAC destinations. If he gets to free agency, by the way, he has the most leverage in NFL history. Well, well we're just going to leave it there because uh, it, 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 this is nothing that we haven't discussed before. This is nothing that we don't know. It's it's maddening that we sit here and we know everybody has gotten paid. Okay, we know what it is, but yet they're still looking for a bargain that just is not going to be there. So I don't know where we go with the Joneses. This stuff is ridiculous, and I'm not sure. Again, if I'm Dak Prescott, if I want to be here in Dallas. But um, you can best believe Dak Prescott is going to make sure he plays the lights out because somebody is going to pay. And if it's the Cowboys, he's going to make, if you make him play on a year without a contract extension, you can best believe that he's going to make sure you pay through the nose for him taking all that risk. All right, good people. I hope you all are having a great day. Uh, this is a day I can actually get back and catch my breath and get caught up with everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. Got a few errands to run this morning, but we're going to be here. We're going to get our shit together, and we are going to definitely talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Happy birthday, Dak Prescott and good people. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, because we can't do this without you. Peace out.